Howdy guys and welcome to Malibu, California. I present to you the brand new Volkswagen Taos. It's brand new for 2022 and it is their entry level little baby crossover that is coming to the market very soon right here and I'm going to tell you all about it. This is an interesting vehicle for Volkswagen because the subcompact class is relatively competitive. Let me put it to you this way. You have the Jeep Renegade, you have the Fiat 500X, you have the Honda HRV, you have the Toyota CHR and CX30, a bunch of other vehicles too, and they all compete against this vehicle. And here's the good news if you're a Volkswagen fan. This vehicle is near the top when it comes to power, pricing, MPG, and cargo room. What do you get with this new 1.5 liter turbo? Well, you get 158 horsepower and 184 pound-feet of torque. That's pretty good. The numbers are actually pretty compelling when you look at them compared to the many of the competitors. It's faster, <laughs> trust me on this, than a Honda HRV as an example. Then again, it doesn't have a CVT. You know what it has? If you get all-wheel drive, you get a dual clutch seven speed, a DSG, or if you get the front wheel drive version of this car, you get an eight speed automatic transmission. I know it's confusing. I don't quite know why they did that, but the good news is the DSG so far has proven to be very smooth. Another nice thing about this new 1.5 liter turbo is the fact that you get pretty damn good gas mileage. Base model, front wheel drive, 28 miles per gallon city, 38 miles per gallon highway, combined 31 MPG. If you get four motion all wheel drive, you drop that just by a little bit. Ain't it cute? Actually, I really do like this design. This is Volkswagen's new face, and you're going to see some design upgrades with their other vehicles. In many ways, the 2022 Volkswagen Taos kind of brings that new design to you guys. And by doing this, they've also shown that you can make a little box look kind of cool. Now, come with me, because this is the SE model, and as such, there are three different levels in terms of things that you get with the trims, including 17, 18, or 19 inch wheels, depending on the trim, and also options but you still get the styling, which is quite good. But I wanted to show you guys something, and it has to do with back here. Now, by the way, I really do like these creases. It looks like a baby Tiguan, but better. I really do think it's better looking than even the brand new Tiguan. Actually, I really do like these Pirelli Scorpions too. Aren't they nice? 18 inch wheels, they're painted black. Not my favorite thing to paint wheels, but I do like the design. Now, here's an important tip for those of you guys who are saying, how big is this really? Think about the current Volkswagen Tiguan. Now the one we have technically could have three rows. So worldwide, that Tiguan is considered the long wheelbase. That is 9.3 inches longer than this vehicle. So about where my foot is, right about here. That's how long the Tiguan is compared to this vehicle. That kind of gives you an idea of its size. But I wanted to show you something else because we're talking about design. There's one thing I do not like and Volkswagen keeps doing it. Follow me, cameraman. Oh, that ain't real. That's plastic in there. In other words, this cool looking exhaust tip is not an exhaust tip. It's just a design feature that looks like exhaust. Volkswagen, you're killing me. Why do you keep doing that? It looks so good and you just put the fake thing on there and it does. I'm going home. Okay, I didn't go home. I got over the fake exhaust and you know why? because this car comes with eight colors. That's right, it's pretty good options. And I really do like this blue, but I wanted to talk to you about the interior because look at this, pretty decent cargo space. So behind the second row, you have just over 13 cubic feet of cargo space. It is a split folding rear seat. Maximum cargo space is a noticeably awesome over 51 cubic feet. That is very competitive. Once again, this car is sort of aiming for the top. It doesn't really lead with power, but it's close. It doesn't really lead with cargo capacity, but it's close. But I wanted to go over something very interesting, which is the digital cockpit. Volkswagen has made it standard with an eight inch screen and you can opt to a 10.25 inch screen. Now, what is it? 
basically. All instrumentation is digitalized, looks really good, it's very crisp. Not everybody likes it. Some people really do prefer the old school actual physical gauges, and I get that. But that's what comes standard now on the Volkswagen Taos. Let's talk about infotainment, Apple CarPlay. Actually, <laughs> got my phone plugged in, and if I didn't want to, I could do wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. As much as I like the way the screen is designed and everything else, everybody who's competing with this car company is doing a little bit more when it comes to infotainment. Larger screens, more standard speakers, whatnot. You can get up to eight speakers and an upgraded, very nice stereo system. Let's talk about the seats though. Now there are options of course to go higher end in terms of seating, but this SE, the middle range model, is really nice. This is like a suede material. This is like leather. Both of these feel very good and the stitching looks great. I do like the fact that they made this cushion nice and flat for a big American ass. These seats are bigger than I'm used to from Volkswagen. Headroom is excellent. I have a tall torso. I've got tons of space. Legroom is fantastic. The Germans are really good about that, but I wanted to show you the back seat. So I wanted you guys to see this because unlike a lot of other vehicles that have a really functional, very cool cargo area, this one's fairly standard and simple. If you're looking for more usable and interesting cargo space, the Honda HRV is the way to go. It's fantastic, but this is very simple. As you can see right here, and I hate using that term, but nothing else you can really do. So the seat isn't exactly flat when you fold it down. So there's a little bit of a bump here, but it's not too bad. You can still get stuff in here. Interesting thing here is that these seats don't slide and they don't recline. This is how the back seat is, but look at this. I'm 6'1". I don't care what you guys say. <laughs> I really am. Especially when I don't slouch. And I totally fit behind myself with excess space. Massive sunroof. Often, with many vehicles, the sunroof actually takes up extra space because it will drop down a little bit. That's not the case here. This vehicle may have the best back seats in its class. I wanted to talk to you guys about the competition just in some basic terms because some of you guys have been asking about you know horsepower and pricing and we are going to talk about pricing at the end of this so the Mazda CX-30 which in my mind is one of the best vehicles in its class at least for a driver that vehicle starts base price $22,000 about 186 horsepower it's not bad it's actually one of the best in class the Chevy Trailblazer the base price is 26,000 and it has 155 horsepower and the HRV, $22,000 base price, which is good. 141 horsepower hooked up to a CVT. It's a little slow. It's, in fact, it's very slow and it's about to be restyled. I wanted to mention that because this vehicle, base price, $22,995. That's for the base S model front wheel drive. Then if you go up to the SE, $27,295. Keep in mind, you get a big package for that. <laughs> I said big package. And finally, the SEL, fully loaded with all the bells and whistles, $31,490. All of these vehicles are front wheel drive. If you want all wheel drive, it's $1,450, $1,450. All right, guys, I know you're asking about the chip shortage and the fact that most cars are just not available. Well, I have a little bit of good news for you. The Volkswagen Taos is going to be available in June. And Volkswagen says they already have 8,000 units ready to roll with the chip that you can buy. And hopefully they'll have more by then. So at least they're going to be able to move some. And for those of you who are big Volkswagen fans who really want this, you might be able to get one. So keep that in mind. Will this become electric? Well, they actually said that the MQB platform that this is based on, which almost everything that Volkswagen builds is based on, can be electrified, and they are looking into it. Now, I also asked some questions about towing. They said, absolutely not. This car is not made for towing. They don't even offer a towing package or a towing kit. Now, there is one more thing that I bet a lot of you guys are wondering. Ground clearance. Well, I found out that this model is 6.6 .6 inches off the ground. That's not best in class, not even close. In fact, it's on the lower end, but it's still high enough to get over snow, I guess. Okay, there are a couple things I wanted to quickly point out. First of all, you may recognize this if you've seen any Volkswagen product built over the past 10 years. Same type of heating, air conditioning, convenience system with 
heated seats. But this is the most important thing for me, and that goes with the modes that you can choose. If you want a little tiny bit more fun, because this is a DSG, I'm putting it in drive, and then boom -o, now I'm in manual mode. And I can go into different gears by shifting. Windy road, yes. Sports car, no, it's not. First of all, very soft. The spring rate is remarkably smooth. I'm not feeling a whole lot underneath me in terms of little things. Big bumps are the only thing that seems to upset this car. They set it up to be a smoother riding vehicle than the Tiguan, I swear to God. In fact, I would say that this rides smoother than an Atlas. I'm not kidding. That is by far the most positive part of this car. But what about the negatives? Ready? Here we go. I'm accelerating. That's the turbo kicking in. Did you hear that? Yeah, that's the transmission slowly shifting. Now it's a DSG, seven speed. And what it does is when I punch it, it revs and then it drops a little bit before it shifts. Now I know I'm nitpicky, but this car is meant to be fun and I think that takes a little tiny bit of the fun out of it. The good news is that in terms of responsiveness around the corners and as I'm zooming around here in the hills of Malibu, it's not bad. Is this the right car for you? I think it's better than the Tiguan. As a matter of fact, I would probably choose this vehicle over the Atlas Sport. I'm not kidding. I think it's that good. It needs a couple things to really make it a little bit more, I don't know, playful, but it really does have a much more playful nature than those other ones. And the room is fantastic. So why get the bigger one? You know what I mean? Guys, thank you so much for joining me for the Fast Lane Car. This is Nathan. I'll see you next time.